Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch and welcome back to my kitchen. I am very happy to have you here with me today. I'm going to be doing a couple of fun bread related projects in the kitchen today. We are going to make some sourdough bread, just an everyday simple sourdough loaf. And while we're doing that, I'll walk you through how to start your own sourdough starter. It could not be easier. We're also going to be planting some more microgreens. I have enough seeds left here for another tray of pea uh, microgreens. And this is the first time I've ever done peas before and I'm really impressed with how fast they grow. I'll show you down in the grow room where we're at with the ones that we started five days ago. It's pretty impressive. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do is make some bagels today. One of my sons came up from the pantry and reminded me that I have everything bagel seasoning down there that we got at Costco a couple months ago. So I decided I would make some bagels. It has been, I'd say probably 15 years since I've made bagels. So we'll see how they turn out. I've already started mixing up my sourdough starter. So I'll walk you through what we did to get to this point. I'm making a double batch, so that's two loaves of sourdough bread for this recipe. So I used half a cup of starter, or two and two thirds cup of water, along with four tablespoons. Mix that all together really well. And now I'm going to add three teaspoons of fine sea salt to this. And I've only added half of my flour so far, so I've added four cups. And um, I just like to get my salt all incorporated in first before I add all that extra flour. It just gets, starts to get hard to stir at that point. And this dough is going to be really kind of shaggy and thick for the first little bit until all the gluten fibers start getting spread out and all of that awesome chemistry stuff that starts happening when you're, when you're baking bread starts to happen. Sourdough is one of those things like most things in the kitchen where you can make it as simple or as complicated and fancy as you want. I, as you probably know, like to keep it as simple and easy as possible. So I don't use a scale. A lot of people use a scale when they're making sourdough bread, um, which I do not do just because I find that a little bit more complicated. You know, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more water to this though. Okay, so the dough is going to feel really dense and look kind of shaggy. That's the word that's used to describe the way that looks and um, that's normal. So what we're gonna do now is actually just set this aside and cover it with a damp tea towel and then let it rest for 30 minutes. This is my go-to book for sourdough. So it starts out with really simple instructions and simple recipes. And then as you go along, it um, gives you a little bit more complicated recipes and you can do fancier things with it and pizza and things like that. But this, in my opinion, is the best sourdough um, instructions that I've found. Highly recommend this book. She walks you through step-by-step step how to do the sourdough starter. I will walk you through how to start your own sourdough starter because it's really, really simple. You're going to start with half a cup of whole wheat flour. It's really important that you start with whole wheat flour because it has a lot more nutrients in it for the yeasts to feed on just to get everything activated. Um, start with half a cup of that and then add a quarter cup of water. Give that a good mix. Let that sit for around 24 hours or so and still, until it starts to get a little bit bubbly. It's not gonna be super active at this point, just a little bit bubbly. And it might form a little bit of uh, like a brown liquid on the top of it. That's totally fine. You can just stir that in. You want to remove half of it and you can discard that and then add another half a cup of, but this time instead of whole wheat flour, use white flour another cup of whole wheat flour, or of, um, sorry. So that is a half a cup of white flour and a quarter cup of water. Give that a really good mix in with your starter that you have in the jar, set it aside again, and make sure that you do set your sourdough on a plate because it will likely overflow at some point, especially when it starts getting really active. Once you have done that, you leave it again for 24 hours. At that point, you should start seeing it get bubbly. And for the next three or four days, you'll do the same thing. You'll remove half of the starter, add half a cup of flour and a quarter cup of water, give it a mix, leave it again for 24 hours. After about five days, it will start to look like that. Can you see all those bubbles in there? And that is when you can start using it. So you can use whatever recipe you're using. 
Um, and then make sure that whenever you take starter out of your jar, that you add another half a cup of flour and another quarter cup of um, water and mix it together just to keep feeding it. If you wanna give your starter a bit of a break because say you're going away for a couple of days or whatever, you can put your starter in the fridge and then just reactivate it when you get home, bring it out, let it come to room temperature, add your half cup of flour and your quarter cup of water, give it a mix and it might take it to a few days for it to get active again. But I have done that a couple of times with great success. So I'm gonna cover this, set this aside over here. I have decided that while that is sitting, we are going to go outside and go down to my little greenhouse and get a bunch of trays. I have to go through all my trays and find ones that don't have cracks and holes in them so that when I put them in my grow room, they're not dripping down on any of the lights or anything and causing any issues. Uh, we'll head out to the greenhouse and I can show those of you that are new to my channel, my greenhouse setup, and I'll explain what I use it for when we get there. No, those are just poetry. That's a book of poetry. You can look at it though. My mom gave that to me when I was 14 and I actually met dad the day that she gave me that book. Isn't it pretty? If you smell it, it kind of smells like roses. If you open it up and smell it. Here, I'll show you this. Can I, can I see that for a second? Yeah, she looks like Anne of Green Gables. So my mom gave me this book back in 1992, February 14th. It says, To Chelsea with Love from Mom to commemorate your first teen dance. And it was at that dance that Dan and I had our first kind of real conversation. <laughs> so that's why I've decided to keep it all these years because it has lots of sentimental value. But as we have been having the warmest January I ever remember having. In fact, the last week of December was pretty warm too, but it's been above freezing during the day, just about every day. And we're actually starting to lose some of our snowpack already. And uh, last night was super windy and blew all the rest of the snow you can see up there off all the trees. It really does feel like spring out here. Well, hello there, Skittles. What are you doing out here? This is my garden kitty. She loves being in the garden, but I haven't seen you down here in the winter time before, you silly girl. Okay, so we're walking through this area here. This is my perennial garden and I call this the forest garden. So there's tons of fruit trees and berry bushes in this garden. And then through this archway leads us into my vegetable garden. This here, all of this up here and over here and then up to the back fence line over there. This is where I grow all my veggies up in behind the trampoline, up over on the other side by the kids' fort there, I have my crop garden. And up there is where I usually grow my, my potatoes, my onions, and my carrots, and my high tunnel. So there's a pathway down here with some stairs down to my high tunnel, and I grow all my peppers and my tomatoes in there. It's a very messy greenhouse in here. This is where I bring out all my seedlings once they've gotten too large for the indoor grow room, and I bring them out here and finish them off out here. We do have this double lined with plastic and then I usually um, put a two by four across here with some plastic and bring it down over top of my plants at night and put a heater in there so they don't freeze. Plants start coming out here by the end of March. These are actually some fancy seed starting trades that I bought, I think from Mums Sprouting Seeds here in Canada. So this tray with the holes in it sits inside this tray so that you can bottom water. So I think I'll bring these two up and I'll use these for our seeds for today. I think I'm just gonna have to stand out here in the sunshine for a few minutes. This is one of my garlic beds here. So there's garlic underneath there, having a rest till spring. I leave sunflowers out in the winter time so that the birds can come. You can see they were munching on some of the sunflowers there and pull out all of the seeds. They almost have all the seeds out of these ones, it looks like. This is a sea buckthorn and I'm really hoping that this will be the year that we get berries off of it. It'll be the first time. So this is a, this is going into, I think it's fourth year. 
so I should get berries. You know what? It is just too beautiful to be in the house this morning. So I think what we'll do is get the bread. I'll show you what we need to do for the next step on the bread. And then I think we're gonna go for a walk. We have our soil here. By the time we get back from our walk, it will be, hopefully the water will have absorbed in there. I'm going to wash up these trays. So I mentioned this before, but I always wash my trays with hot soapy water with a little bit of bleach in them just to kill off anything that might be on them from the previous year. And then we only have 12 seconds left. That was good timing for our bread. So we can do that step. Hey guys, we're gonna go outside for a walk out, out in the field just cause it's so sunny. So what we're gonna do now is fold and stretch this. Okay, so with sourdough bread, it's going to feel sticky because it's going to be sticky. Instead of kneading sourdough bread, we want to pull and stretch it. Now that it's formed a relatively smooth ball, I am going to put it into a clean bowl and this will rise in a warm place until it's double in size, which takes about eight hours. You can do this overnight and then make your bread in the morning. All right, let's go for a walk and enjoy this gorgeous weather. We could go to either down the driveway or in the back field. You guys, why don't you go take a vote and see what everyone wants to do? little peek on the Piggly Wigglies. They are going to be able to come outside soon. That's exciting. This is another angle of our property that you don't often get to see. So our barn is right up over there. And then we're in the north field right now. And these are the fields that you see out the front of our property. And then over this way is the north field back here. So we're just on the south side of the north field. And then it goes all the way over here and we're going to head up over that way. Nice thing is, is that the cows have made paths all over the property, which is quite convenient for us to walk on. We're about halfway down the north field now. It's just getting more and more beautiful by the second. I had to take my jacket off because it is too warm outside in the sunshine in January to walk with a jacket. Pretty crazy that two weeks ago it was negative 35, negative 40. I will take this any day. So that's the sound of ravens that you can hear. We have someone else that came to say hello. Hi honey, how are you? This is our north field. So halfway through the swampy area right there is our fence line. It's very calming out here. Oh no! <laughs> uh, the kids got that from their grandparents for Christmas and they haven't quite mastered how to get it. They can get it to go up, but they can't get it to go straight yet. Now it's time to go back up to the house and make some food. Okay, back in from that glorious walk. And now I'm just gonna show you these trays a little bit more closely. So they are specifically for microgreens. So you can see they're not very deep, holes in the bottom and then a solid tray and this sits on top and it just hovers slightly above the bottom so that you can bottom water your sprouts. So I am going to spread some soil on both of these trays and I'm going to do one with lettuce and one with peas. I was just gonna say, don't forget to remind me to show you the uh, microgreens downstairs on day five. I sometimes forget that you're not actually here with me. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to, I would grab the camera and bring you down so you could see 
a little bit better, but um, my hands are covered in dirt. So all I'm doing now is patting down the soil and I'm gonna give them just one more water because it's still a little bit dry, even after soaking for an hour. Okay, dokey. Now, sprinkle on some seeds. So I did find that I could have um, done the pea seeds a little bit more densely. So I'm gonna do that with these ones. You can um, pre-soak your seeds if you like. For larger seeds, like any legumes, it does speed up germination quite a bit. So what I'm going to do for these is I'm actually not going to cover them. I'm gonna take this tray and stick it on top. I'll leave it on the top there for a couple of days and then I'll pull it off once all the seeds have germinated. This one though, I'll put a little sprinkle on and water them. Oh, it smells like a garden. Isn't that beautiful? So these are the ones that we planted the other day. I'm gonna let these grow a little bit more and then we'll eat them. But as you can see, there's quite a bit of space in this tray, so it looks pretty full from the top. But um, I could have done this a little bit more densely, which is why I did that with that tray. So I am just putting this other tray that's heavier on the top of this that's holding down all of the pea seeds that I just planted that I didn't cover. And then I'll show you probably in two to three days um, when they've germinated and then we'll pull it off. One more thing before we stop for lunch, I started up another couple of jars of micro green, or no, sprouts, <laughs> these ones are sprouts. And I did mums seeds. These are the ones that I've been using for the last couple of years and they're really good quality. Um, this one's a spite, spicy lentil crunch and this one is daikon radish. And so all I've done is I've soaked them in about half a cup of water each and I'll be draining these off. I don't know, I'll usually soak them for a couple of hours, um, drain them off and then I'll rinse them a couple of times a day. And within five days, these jars will be filled with sprouts. This is the one that I did um, when did I take this one off the windowsill? I think yesterday and put it in the fridge. We've been munching on it already. I had it with eggs and sliced tomatoes this morning. So good. Tasted like summer. So I would definitely recommend, even if you don't garden, to do some sprouts. Great way and cheap way to get some greens into your diet. Okay, we're gonna stop for our lunch break now. I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, we are now back at it. I had a lovely nap this afternoon. I feel much refreshed. So we are going to make bagels now. And like I mentioned earlier, I have not made bagels in about 100 years. And I don't have a standard recipe that I used or anything. I just used something off the internet then and I have done the same thing now. Um, we need three cups of warm water. Five teaspoons of yeast. Oh, I do want to ask you a question. So I have these sweaters. Did I mention this earlier in the video? I feel like maybe I did, but anyway, um, this one is dirty. Oh, I'm not wearing my apron. Gosh darn it. Uh, but I love it. I think it looks really cute. The only thing is, is that I think I might want to lift the logo up a little bit so it's not sitting so down low and maybe make it a little bit smaller. But let me show you the other one that I have. Okay, so this is the other one. You can see the logo on this one is a lot smaller than this one. So this is kind of more what I'm thinking. These are a different design of sweater. I think this one was the premium one or it might be the other way around, but either way, um, I won't list them until I have them completely locked in as far as like this, the way that I like them. But what do you guys think? Tell me down in the description box below. Do you like the smaller logo that sits up higher or do you like the larger logo like this one? I love the color of the sweater, but, um, or do you like the lar larger one? 
let me know. So we're gonna have the logo design one like this one, and then I'm also getting a couple of them made. My niece is designing them. She is an absolutely spectacular artist. Um, she's designing them and they say plant flowers everywhere and they have flowers out of my garden on them. They're gonna be absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to have those ones out. Okay, let's do this. So how many did I say it was? I said it was four, no, five. So we need five teaspoons of yeast, two table tablespoons of sugar, and I'm not going to add any whole wheat to these ones. We'll just make these ones white flour. I always get asked where I buy my flour, and I buy mine from True Grain in British Columbia, which is organic BC grown wheat, which I love. So we're going to do four and then I'm gonna beat that in and then I'll add the other four and then knead. I bought a couple of these, I think I showed these in a previous video, but a couple of these beautiful wood spoons and these are from Ballerina Farms in Utah. I am so inspired by what those guys are doing down there. So I wanted to support their business and these are fabulous and I use this one. This one's supposed to be for stirring um, sourdough and particularly for when you're mixing your starter up because it's nice and long and reaches down into the bottom of the jar and it's not metal so it doesn't chip or crack or scrape the inside of your jars. But I use it for everything. I just love it. Okay, now to this, we need to add some salt, four teaspoons of salt. And I'm actually going to just add my flour into there. Now it says in the recipe that this dough is too thick to knead in um, the mixer, but I'm hoping I can get all the flour actually mixed in with it and then I can do the kneading by hand. So, whoops, I need to plug it in. Right now, can you guys see this mess of wires that's on the um, windowsill here. I don't remember if I mentioned this before either. I think my memory's taken leave of me. But um, this is our Starlink internet setup and we have the satellite dish for it set up outside. But um, Dan is having to drill a hole through the wall up there and he's been contemplating doing it in other ways. So we just have the cord sticking through the window right here which means I have this big mess of wires in my kitchen right here. I want to show you the starter that we added the flour into this morning. Can you see how much that's risen and how bubbly it is already? So by probably tonight at bedtime, it will probably be up to the top of the jar already. It's a really nice active starter. We actually have some cream cheese in the fridge right now, which I normally don't have. So these are going to be delicious. Hopefully they're going to be delicious with some cream cheese later. Do you ever make things in your kitchen that you haven't made in a really long time and then wonder why the heck it took so long to do it or why you don't do it more often? That happens to me all the time. Oh, I should put a little bit on the counter. You know what? Let's put on an apron, shall we? I had an apron made with my logo on it too. And I really love these, the buttons, that's really cute, but I am not crazy about the fabric and there were, were no other options for it. So I'm gonna have to look for another source to get these made. As you can see, it's like a shiny kind of fabric, which I wasn't crazy about. And the other thing about this one too, is I wanna put the logo up higher so it's more on the chest and then have something with pockets on it. But I am super happy with the way that um, the logo turned out though almost mixed up so I'm going to need another bowl for that to rise in and I'm going to have to run downstairs to grab be back in just a sec yeah that is a very thick dough I'm just gonna give it a little bit more of a knead and I'm gonna have to take my bracelet off my daughter made this bracelet for me isn't it beautiful okay I'm gonna call that done there. Okay, Hud, you gotta go outside, okay? 
Okay, I am going to call that done. And so now we're gonna let it rise for 60 to 90 minutes. Okay, we'll aim for an hour, and then if it's doubled in size, we'll stick with that. And if not, we will add another half an hour. It, I do have a bread proof option, which keeps the temperature perfect for bread proofing in the oven. And that does tend to speed things up quite a bit. Dan just came back with the freeze dryer. So we will get that uh, moved in. We have to move the other one out and get it packaged up with all this packaging that came with this one and then get that one sent back and get this one hooked up, but we'll be able to run it through all its kind of test cycle and all of that. And then hopefully be freeze drying by like tomorrow afternoon. That would be amazing. Fingers crossed everything works. And I wanted to thank Julie from Dirt Patch Heaven for mentioning me over on her channel the other day. The cool thing about that is that Julie, when I first started watching YouTube probably seven or eight years ago, maybe even a bit longer, and watching Homestead content, Julie's channel was one of the first channels, and it was actually one of the first YouTube channels I ever remember seeing um, on YouTube, and I started watching her, and she and I actually started talking back and forth back during those days when I was talking about doing a YouTube channel, and she was hugely encouraging to me. So thank you so much, Julie. I really appreciated that. Did I tell you guys that I checked my beehives and all three of my hives are still alive? I am so excited. I am determined to, while I have done everything that I could possibly do at this point, make sure that they make it through the winter. So they made it through that really bad cold snap that we had, and it would be amazing if it stayed relatively mild for the rest of this winter. Be phenomenal. So I'm just gonna get this water boiling over here and then we'll take out our dough and get a little bit of flour on the counter here and our scraper and this is supposed to make around 16 or so bagels looks about right. So I'm supposed to make this into a ball and punch my thumb through the center like so. Oh, I guess you need to really make sure it's all <laughs> stuck together. That didn't turn out quite right. Okay, whoops, I forgot to grab my cookie sheets. Whenever I use too much olive oil in my bowl, which I did this time, it makes it hard to get the dough to stick together. <laughs> I could probably do. They do look nice, don't they? Thank you. Then we have to boil these for one minute for each side, brush egg wash on top and around the sides of each bagel, and then bake for 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, my bagels kind of got smaller and smaller and smaller as I went here. Okay, okay. now we're gonna take our bagels and pop them in. I'm gonna do, probably, I can fit six in this big pot. Okay, there's our timer. <laughs> These are the very much less pretty sides <laughs> of the bagels. <laughs> oh my goodness flip them over and cook them for one minute on that side. Okay, I'm gonna show you where we're at with our sourdough. I'm going to give it, I don't know, probably another hour but it has risen quite a bit and there's some bubbles forming on it. Whoops. So we'll let this sit. We have to wait till those are done cooking anyway. So perfect timing and then we'll make these loaves. They look beautiful. Yes, you may. They're very hot though, so be careful of the tray, okay? I am very excited about those. So now I'm just preheating the oven to 450. 
I'm going to get my Dutch oven that's been sitting over on Martha. I'm gonna pop that in the oven so it gets nice and hot. And I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit of flour on the counter again. Okay, so we're going to cut this in half and then stretch it out a little bit and fold in the corners, fold them over again and again. And then in order to form my loaf, I'm gonna just pull it in towards me like so. Same thing with the next one. So the reason that we do this is to build tension in the surface of the dough. And then we're just gonna let these rest on the counter here. So we have our proofing bowls here and I am just going to sprinkle some flour in them. You want to be pretty liberal with your flour so that you don't end up with um, your dough stuck on the inside. So now what we're going to do is take these off really gently and seam side up, place them in our proofing baskets. This little tool here is called a bread lame and it is for cutting the fancy patterns into the top of the bread. So I'll show you that when we get to that stage. This is a very bready day around here. This is a Paderno Dutch oven, this square one. I always get lots of questions about it whenever I show it. So we will grab a piece of parchment paper and we're going to grab one of our loaves here and very carefully flip it out like so and carefully lower it into our Dutch oven. And then I'm going to take the bread lame Okay, now we pop our lid on and into the oven it goes. We're going to bake this for 20 minutes with the lid off, or on, sorry, and then we're going to take the lid off and bake it for another 20 to 30 minutes or so. Can't wait to show you when it's all done. My kids said the bagels were fantastic. The only complaint one of them had was that they felt like they were a little bit overcooked, so the um, sprinkles on the top uh, got a little bit crispy, maybe slightly burnt. <laughs> so I am just gonna dial back the time probably by about five minutes the next time that I make them, but they were fantastic and they had veggie loaded bagels and said they were really good. So that's great, that recipe was a hit. We have just a couple more minutes left. I'll just take a peek in here at our bread. It is just about done and it looks delicious. Okay, we have loaf number one is ready and it smells really good. Ah, it looks really good too. Look at that beautiful loaf. Okay, so now I'm gonna reuse this parchment paper.
This is definitely not the best loaf of bread I've ever made, but it is the first sourdough of 2023 and I'm absolutely thrilled about it. Time to get back into the regular rhythm of making sourdough bread. I am getting quite tired now, my friends, so I'm going to end today's video right here. If you want to see what the other loaf looks like, you can pop over to Instagram and I will post a picture of it over there. I really enjoyed being here with you guys today. I hope you did too, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.